Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Jake. And in this video, we'll be looking at structuring data using records. So far, we've been using built-in data types to determine the kinds of information that we can store in the variables in our programs. And so we can store things like numbers and text. And that's been really great so far. But now that I'm starting to write larger programs, I want to be able to deal with more meaningful things in my code. So for example, I'm writing this program about student data, yep. but I've got lots of variables all over the place and I just like a way to be able to deal with the different pieces of data related to one of my students. Well, that sounds like a case where we can use records. Records allow us to create a composite data type where we define the structure of that type in terms of a number of different fields. So each record is a structure that contains multiple values inside it. Multiple cool. fields is the way I would think about it. Yeah, so this is the code I was just talking about earlier. And so I'm trying to make this program deal with student data. So I've got things like the name, their age, um, their ID, their course, even their GPA. But if I want to add more data, it's just getting messy. If I want to pass it to functions, I have to pass everything. So can I use a record here to be able to group this data? Yeah, so this is a case where we could use a record in order to, yeah, as you said, put all of those things together into a student. Now also, if we look at this at the moment, the, pieces, the, the variables you've got are things like strings, integers, and doubles. There, there's nothing really meaningful yeah. in terms of your, your student program here. Yeah. So if we add a type to that, what we can do is we can create our own uh, record type. And this defines the structure of those multiple fields. Cool. Yeah. So I'm storing all the data I was before, but I'm grouping it into this student record. Yeah. So the student record is composed of multiple fields. Uh, and the structure of those says that, you know, the first thing that we're going to have inside each of these student records, we have a name, which is a string. We have the age, which is an integer. We have a number, which is a string. Course is a string and GPA is a double. And cool. when we come down to main now, instead of having each of those variables uh, or multiple different variables for each of those different yep. pieces of information, what we can actually have is one student variable. And that cool. student variable is composed, so is made up of all of those different pieces uh, yeah, within the one variable. So the data is living inside of the student variable now. Yeah. So how can I access my data? It, it used to be a variable, like a string that I could interact with, but now it's in a student. Yeah, so our uh, a student variable is a student. And what we can use is the, the dot operator allows us to access the fields of that student. So here what we can do instead of, we, we still want to access the strings and integers inside the student, but we can say a student dot name. And so that would be the name value inside the that student variable. And if we do a student dot number, then that is the, the number value, the number variable or number field inside that student variable. So once I access that field, it's like I've got my data back. Yeah, well, yeah, all the data still lives inside that, that one record. Cool. Uh, yeah, so when you type a student, that is a student. And the way I would think about it, then when you push dot, you know, you've got the option of what you want to access there. So you can access either the name, the age, the number, the course, or the GPA. If you do dot name, then you've got a string. You can Perfect. do anything with that string you could have done before. So a student dot name is a string. Yeah. Yeah, just like name was a string. Cool. Yeah. So we can read and write to those values. So you can store it, use those inside the assignment statement. So we can say a student.name is assigned the result of read string. And we can also read the value in the case where we print out the name. So the name comes from cool. a student.name. So that they behave like every other variable that we used to use. Yeah, yeah. So here I'm writing out all of my variables within my student. Is there a way that I can put those into procedure? Do I have to pass all of my variables like I was previously? Okay, so what we could do now is create, uh, so it's a good idea, make creating a procedure to print out the student 
Uh, but what we can do now, which I think is quite cool, is that instead of having to pass across like the name separately from the age to the number to the course to the, and yep, the GPA, yep. you know, hun hundreds of different parameters here, what we can do instead is pass across the one new data type that we've created. Yep. So we can pass across the student record, and that passes across all of the data associated with that, that one student. And that, that would be copied into that, that variable. So I've got all my data that was in a student within my print procedure and I can access it with to print? Yeah, so up here, yeah. So when we call, down here in main, when we call print student, we pass across a student. And all of the data in a student will be copied into the to print student parameter when that, that procedure call executes. And so right. when you access it in here, you've got a copy uh, and we can read to print dot name and you get the name that is inside that, that variable. Uh, to print dot number, you read the, the student number, age, etc. So you mentioned that we're copying the student to the print student procedure, but wouldn't that be a slow way of doing it? Is there a quicker way that we can, why do we have to make a whole copy of it? Okay, so in programming there's two different ways we can pass parameters. There's one called pass by value, and then there's another called pass by reference. And what, what we do with pass by value is you get a copy of the data. So here, when we call print student, a copy of a student is sent into to print. And so to do that, it, it does copy everything. It, it knows the structure of that record. So it knows that it, it contains inside it a string, an integer, two more strings, and a double. And it copies that big chunk of data. That is actually quite a big chunk of data. And it copies that into the to print. So you get a duplication of all of that data. Uh, now, some languages support pass by reference. Uh, and others you can do it manually with a pointer. But pass by reference allows you to say that what you want to pass across is not a copy, but the ability to refer to the other variable. So you're, you're, the easiest way to think about it is, is a pointer. You know, this is a value which points to you know, the actual student you want to, is over there. Uh, and so to print would refer to our a student variable and it can do that very quickly so the reference is a right. pointer that refers to the original so i haven't had to spend time making a whole copy of my data i'm just dealing with the data that i had yeah that's right uh, and when we pass it by reference you there are other things you could do so if you modified it depending on how you passed it by reference if you modified it uh, you could also be changing the original cool. uh, but in this case we just want to print it out so we can uh, we get the reference, it's just we get it much quicker, uh, and then we can access the individual fields just as if it is a copy. I mean, it doesn't really matter, it's just a bit faster. Cool. So I've moved my writing to a procedure. Yep. Can I move my reading? Yeah, so we could also create a, a read student function in this case. Uh, and in this, in this instance, we could print out, or we could return, sorry, uh, a student. So student, when we've created our own type here, the student type, can be used anywhere you could use any other types. So wherever you could have used an integer uh, or a string, etc. before, we can now use our student type. So before we could create functions that return numbers, for example, yep. we can now create functions that return students. That's awesome. And the compiler knows what the student is because we've defined what the structure right, of that student without, is. Right, cool. With the type declaration. Cool. Yeah. And so inside our read student function, uh, we could store values into the, the name, the number, the age, the course, and the GPA for that student. And then at the end, when we return it, it returns all of that student data. That, that is it knows what it is, that big chunk cool. of data. So my, the code looks really similar. It just means that I don't have to pass all my variables as separate parameters. Yeah, and in this case, we can return all of them in one. You Perfect. couldn't have created a function before that returned uh, exactly. You know, five different yeah, variables. I can only a function return. returns one value. Perfect. Yeah. So this, this we can perfect. return one value, which just happens to contain five values. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So another cool thing that we can do with uh, records is, if we come back to main here, I've declared uh, another student variable, very creatively <laughs> named another student, uh, and what we can do. Notice how when we assign here, we've got a student is assigned the result of calling the read student function. Yep. That data, that's going to call that function. When that function returns, it returns back that whole student. We copy all of that data into 
to a student. student record. Now we can actually do that ourselves. We don't have to just use functions to do that. We could right. we can do that between variables ourselves. So if I create another student variable here, I can say another student is assigned a student. So exactly like an integer or a string, we can yeah. assign our own data types. Yeah. That's right. So assignment works as long as the, the things are the same type on both sides. Yeah, so because they're both a student, I yeah. can just assign it what the other student what the current student is to the other another student. Yeah. So the A student data here, all of the data, so the name, student number, age, course, GPA, all of that data will be copied into another student and we'll now have two copies of that data in memory. Cool. Uh, and so when we print out A student and we print out another student, it'll be exactly the same. But what if I don't want it to be exactly the same? So I want to change the another student's name. All right, so if we change another student's name, when we print them out, what we should see now is the first student has uh, the original data. Yep. And the other student has a copy, but the name has changed because they are two separate variables. Each has its own distinct set of values. Yeah, so they're two separate students. student yeah. Sets of data. That's awesome. Yeah, the two students. It says so I could a student is a student, another student <laughs> is a student. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So I could change anything in my in my separate student. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay, Jake, do you want to explain how this works? Yeah, sure. So the program starts at main and we create two student variables, yep. one named a student and one yep. named another student. And they contain the student structure that we declared in our type. Yep. So that means that each of these variables has inside it a field to store the name, field to store the age, number, course, and GPA. So the first instruction is calling read student, and read student returns to us a student, and we take that student and assign it to a student. Yep. So we have to jump to the read student function. Yeah, that's okay. And uh, we have our result variable of type student because we're returning a student. Yep. So we print out the prompt. Yep. And then we, we, as we can see here, we call read string, yeah. which um, returns to us a string, which we now assign to the name field of our result variable. So what are we going to have as this? So let's say we, Fred again. Fred, Got okay. Fred. So Fred is stored into the result.name variable. Yeah. Then we jump down to the second line and we call read string again and we're getting Fred's number and Fred's number one. So we assign number one to our number field of our result variable. Yep. And again, we go to the next line and we, we're getting an integer this time because we're getting Fred's age and we and say we get 21. We assign 21 to Fred's result yeah. age field. Yeah, so the age field of the result variable. Yeah. And, then and we could do the same thing for the course name and that's stored into the course and the same thing for the GPA, yeah. which is stored into the GPA. Yeah. Yeah. So, now so we, then at the end of this function... All of that data in result is returned back to the calling code. Yeah. And so what happens is that is then assigned, that sort of when read string finishes, read string, when read student finishes, all of that data comes back and is stored into the a student variable. Cool. Then we proceed to our second instruction and we are getting that a student variable that we've created and getting the data in it and assigning it to our another student variable. Yeah, so this is going to mean that Fred is copied across to the name. Uh, the number one is copied across yep. to the, the student yep. number. 21 yep. is copied across to the age. And we get the course and the GPA we getting copied across. an exact copy of yeah. Fred stored in our another student variable. Yeah. So the next uh, instruction in, in this piece of code is to assign the string, another student, to the name of another student. So there can yeah. only be one Fred. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. And so when we execute print student, we pass across a student. Yep. So we're calling print student, which uh, is passing a reference. A reference to a student. Yeah. So, so to print is now going to refer, as we can see here, to print refers to a student. A student. And so when we print out the name, so to print dot name is actually Fred. Yeah. And two print dot number is so whatever whatever stored in a student at the time that this runs will be printed. Yeah, because that's what we pass. Because we're just across. But yeah, yeah, cool. And then when we come when that finishes, we come back to main. When it prints out another student, two print now points to that other exactly uh, the other variable. And so we can see when it prints out the the name in this case, we get another student because that was the because, value we copied exactly. in there. But the rest of the data is going to be whatever was in 
another student, which will be, you know, number one, age of 21, etc. Et yeah. All right, cool. So, so here are a couple of other examples. We have a player, for example. And so this could store like the player's location. Yeah, it's bitmap, score. it's name, yeah, yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Everything we need to have our player. Yeah, in this computer game. Yep. Uh, second up, we've got our account uh, example. So we could have things like the name of the account holder, the re total funds remaining, everything that... Credit again, limit. Credit, everything that yeah. we need to know about the account. Yeah. And the last one is a component from, a, uh, say, a circuit diagram. And we've got the type of component and its position uh, in, the, yep. in the diagram. So that's all we have for uh, records. Records allow you to declare your own data type which contains multiple fields and you declare the structure of those fields. What do you want contained inside this record or this structure? Coming up next, our other videos, we've got uh, another one on enumerations which is another kind of data type. Yep, you could also have a look at pointers. So that's what we were talking about in this program about pass by reference, we could use pointers. Yeah, so we've got a video on, on pointers and how pointers work. Uh, and if you're on to the ready for the next big topic, that's uh, arrays, which I yeah. think is very cool. cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. And we hope you've enjoyed this. Bye. This has been a spin. What did you really say? No, that's yeah. good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. No, that's it. It's like, that's the classic sign.